Do you like to diet? Don't be shy. Raise your hand in the comments if you like to diet. <laughs> I guess not, right? Nobody likes to diet. Hmm. Did you ever stop to think that the first three letters in the word diet spell die? I wonder if the brain sees the word diet and thinks die, completely disregarding the T on the end. Now, I don't have any proof of that, but I suspect it could be true because our bodies certainly think we're going to die when we go on a diet. Let me explain. When we diet, we significantly reduce the amount we eat, right? I mean, that's how you lose weight. But that in itself is telling our bodies that there's a shortage of food, which then results in our bodies retaining fat for energy in order to survive. We basically go into survival mode just in case we won't be able to get any more food. Don't forget, when humans first appeared on this planet, they were hunter-gatherers. When there was plenty, they ate. When there was a shortage of food, they starved. But first, they used up any fat reserves they had to sustain them for a period of time. That's why we can last longer without food than we can without water because we don't have a reserve of water, but we do have a reserve of fat. That fat gives us energy. So we have starvation mode, but then we also get cravings mode. That's when we're told we can't have something and then all of a sudden it's all we can think of and all that we're craving. Don't think of a red car. I don't want you to think of a red car. Don't You can't have a red car. Don't think of a red car. Do you see how that works? I bet you thought of a red car, didn't you? Because I know I did. <laughs> so we have the starvation mode and the cravings mode. And next we have the limiting beliefs. Hmm. Limiting beliefs. What's that? I'm sure you've heard the phrase before. Do you really know what they are? Here's an example. Okay. I, I, I'm going to tell myself, I want to lose weight. But then I hear that internal voice saying, ha, ha, yeah, sure. No way. You've never been able to do it before. You won't be able to do it at all or ever. Forget it. This belief of I can't is a limiting belief. In some way, we've told ourselves enough times to get our brain to believe it's the truth. And no amount of saying I can is going to change it. That niggling voice will always be there unless we take action to do something about it. I had limiting beliefs. I had a lot of them. I didn't think I could make videos and talk to complete strangers. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> I didn't think I could lose weight. And here I am, 40 pounds lighter. I didn't think I could follow through on attending classes in my 60s with fibromyalgia and some brain fog studying and learning a new profession look at me now i'm an a i'm a certified aft practitioner i didn't think i could regain my mobility i uh, i couldn't walk very well at all just barely a few steps there uh, about four years ago now i can walk very well without the use of a cane I used to have to use two of them, one in each hand. Now I don't need either one. I 
didn't think I'd live past 50 after I found that I had only one kidney. Here I am at age 70. Go figure. <laughs> and there were many, many more limiting beliefs. You see, either I had convinced myself or someone else had convinced me that these limiting beliefs were truths. I repeated them over and over throughout my life until my brain believed me. You see, the brain is a very trusting organ. It believes that we have our best interests at heart. And so if we tell it something, especially repeatedly, it believes us. And then that becomes a subconscious belief, one that we no longer even realize we carry with us. Unfortunately for us, many of those beliefs we instill in our brains are limiting beliefs. The I can't, we often find ourselves uttering. I like to use an analogy to describe how I think about limiting beliefs now that I've used AFT. You've all heard of the show me state, right? I say, I can do this, and someone always says, yeah, show me. Well, now that I don't have any limiting beliefs about it, I say, I can. They say, show me, and I say, just watch me. <laughs> when we were children, we tend to have very few limiting beliefs. People often wonder and ask me how I can be good at doing so many different things like painting and drawing, writing, creating courses, knitting, cooking, baking, gardening, photography, design work, beading, and more. My reply is that I taught myself to do these things before I had any limiting beliefs that told me I couldn't. Therefore, I could. I could do anything I put my mind to. There was no thought in my head that I couldn't, so I could. Now, did everything come to me the first time I tried it? Of course not. But there's an old saying, and I'm sure you've heard it, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. And that's exactly what I did. I learned to play guitar, <laughs> not very well. <laughs> I learned to play piano and progressed rapidly to grade 10 in the Royal Conservatory of Music. And then I moved out of uh, the family home and didn't have a piano for many, many years. And so I kind of lost that. But I, I was very good at playing piano. I learned to do all kinds of things and got good at them because I didn't give up. And because I knew that I could do it if I gave it some effort. Now, you don't need to do all these things or even any of them. But if there's something you'd like to do, but you've been hesitant or afraid to start, you likely have a limiting belief about it. I don't have the money. I'm not smart enough. I can't. I don't have the time. Those are limiting beliefs. We don't have the money because we choose to spend it elsewhere. We're not smart enough because we don't try. We can't because we don't start. We don't have the time because eh, it's just not important enough to make the time. Limiting beliefs stop us in our tracks. Who gave you your limiting beliefs? Your parents? A friend? Something you saw on TV? A teacher? Something you read in a book? Or did you make a decision about your own capabilities? What proof do you have that these beliefs are true? Do they hold merit? Or can you see through them now 
for what they really are. Just fabrications you've convinced yourself are true. And finally, okay, we get past starvation mode, cravings mode, limiting beliefs. Now we have the restrictions. I don't know of anyone who likes living with restrictions. I know I don't. I mean, it's kind of like being in jail, right? It's you're locked up, with no hope of getting out. Restrictions are a real bummer when it comes to food, right? I mean, many dieters are on the high protein, low carb diet, or commonly known as the keto diet. They eat a lot of healthy fats, veggies, and meat, but there's no room for baked goods, which most of us love, right? I mean, who doesn't love a good donut? <laughs> I like them. Can you see yourself sticking with that limitation for the rest of your life? Or how about even two weeks or a month? I mean, where's the joy in that, right? No potatoes, no rice, no cereal, no bread. I mean, I get it. Those are the fattening foods. But if you can never indulge for the rest of your life, do you think you can stick with that? It's just far too limiting for me. And for me personally, it wouldn't work anyway because I have to limit my protein due to kidney disease. So that just wouldn't leave me with much to eat at all. In order to successfully lose weight and take into account my health issues, I'm also gluten-free, I found a way that wasn't boring, was sustainable, incorporated zero limiting beliefs, and balanced my cravings. Oh, I still indulge in life's little pleasures like a, a piece of cake, but I don't get overboard on them. I just don't. I don't go overboard on them. I don't need them. I like a treat, but I don't need it all the time like I did before. In fact, I cheat on my diet every week, except it's not cheating. I don't have to beat myself up about indulging in a treat because it's just part of my way of eating. With my weight loss program, I'm able to eat what I want and still lose weight. It's a lifestyle, a, a way of eating that is completely sustainable and customizable for the rest of my life. I will never get bored eating salads every day. <laughs> I don't have to eat salads every day. I'll never have to buy expensive prepared foods or drink those yucky ugh, green shakes that, well, they don't fill me up anyway. I guess you can see where I stand on green shakes. There are no supplements to buy either. It's just real food prepared the way you like at home. And I help you get the proper mindset. I help you get rid of all those limiting beliefs and cravings so you can be successful in your weight loss goals. And you get daily motivation from me, as well as a Facebook group where you can ask questions, share recipes, and more. And you'll get cookbooks and recipes from me as well. So let's stop dieting and start enjoying our food. Comment below if you'd like more information. <music>